Hi everyone, thanks for watching and I wanted to continue this video on filters in mography and before we enter the specifics on this subject I wanted to summarize and clarify that half value layers increase with more x-ray tube filtration and the same is true with increases in KVP. Well, why is this important, you might ask. Why don't we just increase KVP and that way we achieve the desired increase in half value layers because we already know that that decreases our radiation dose. However, the, the reason we gain a, a benefit in radiation dose and why people use half value layers to make sure that our x-ray beam is adequate is because we know we're filtering low energy x-rays so we need to achieve that half value layer at the specified kvp so all that is very specific in the regulations and, and another example is that when you add the, the filter in whether it's mammography or, or diagnostic radiology you're also not changing the kvp so let's say we know we want to use a, a, the most penetrating x-ray, we want to use it at 100 kbps because we know we get a good contrast at that level. We don't want to, you don't want to go higher with kbps and sacrifice our optimal contrast. And the other option we have is to increase the average energy of our x-ray by adding filtration while keeping the KVP at the generator the same. So in essence, too much filtration would result in a degraded image quality because of high energy x-rays would produce lower or less subject contrast and more Compton scatter x-rays, which we talk about in prior videos. So we want to have just a in the good amount of, of, of filtration to minimize radiation because on the other hand if we have too little filtration it will result in high radiation doses to the patient because we will be including too many low energy x-rays that cannot penetrate through the patient. That being said I want to jump and start talking about what filters we have in mammography. Mammography it's a little bit different. We're going to be dealing with lower energies around the 20 to 25 keVs. And what we're trying to do here is using different combinations. So when you see molly molly spectrum, what we're talking is that we have a molly target and a molly filter. And you'll see that the the same material that we're using for target also works very well for mammography. And this is one of the hardest concepts people have understanding. And I'm going to try to explain it briefly here. But if you don't understand it right away, um, you know, I will, I will probably go back and, and read or look for different diagrams because it, it does take some time to, to kind of grasp all the things that we're trying to, to include here in this very short video. But in essence, there's a, a phenomenon, if we might call it that way, that our same target happens to be a very good filter. And the way I think of it is that we know that our characteristic x-rays for Molly is 7.6 keVs and 19.7 keVs. So if we go back to the meaning of characteristic x-rays, we know that it is the difference between the K and the L shell or, or when we're kicking that K shell electron we want to make sure that what's or, or we know that what's ejected is the difference between those two shells and so let's say my my K shell energy is 20 keVs and, and that's what it is that, that's why we have it here so our filter is going to filter anything that is higher than 20 keVs because any photon that's at 20 or higher is very likely to cause an injection of that K-shell electron. 
And when it reacts with the filter, that's exactly what it's doing. It's filtering because it's reacting with it. So that energy that's going past the the uh, past 20 KVs, that photon that's going past 20 KVs is never going to make it uh, to the patient because it's reacting with the with the filter and I hope that makes sense and then you might ask me well why are the the characteristic x-rays coming from the target lower well the reason is they're generated through the same process they're generated by having a a an electron in this case eject a 20 kV electron and then the photon that's generated is the difference between those two and this case is going to be either 17.6 kV and 19.7 kV. So I hope that makes sense. And the other, we're going to compare different combinations of target and anodes that we use in mammography. And hopefully it will kind of click and, and it will make sense once we're done. The other thing I wanted to emphasize is that different from the filters we discussed on the previous video, on this one you, you can notice that now in this part we're focusing on filtering the higher energy x-rays and although it, it's a, a different perspective in that sense you're still trying to accomplish the same end goal and that's to tailor your x-ray beam to perform whatever you need to do in in your imaging in this case if we don't control our higher energy beams then that higher energy might produce might, might create reduced contrast in our uh, mammography evaluation and mammography is very sensitive because we're dealing with very small calcifications so let's uh, review this diagram here so we have our spectrum you can see the spectrum has already been being filtered the lower energies are not drawn here because they're essentially filtered we have the main the main um, the main spectrum and then we have the first characteristic energy peak and then we have the second characteristic energy peak after that we see that this triangle here is showing the additional filtering that's performed by having a molly filter so this is the combination of molly molly which would be used for a smaller size breast if we move towards a medium-sized breast, we want to make sure we have a little bit of increase in the energy of our X-ray beam. So the filter that we use is a rhodium. Rhodium has a 23 keV uh, kind of cutoff or, or K-shell energy, and, and that's what's going to determine where it's going to be a better filter at. So it's going to be a good filter for energy of 23 and up, 23 KEVs. We still see that we're using a molly target, so our characteristic radiation is not going to change. We still have the same two targets. The only difference is that now we're not filtering this extra 20 KV uh, photons. So going back, this was a molly, molly spectrum, and now by using a rhodium, we have effectively increased the maximal KVP that's getting through for our imaging and diagnostic mammography. In this case, we're using molly rhodium and we assume we're using a medium sized breast. Then we move on to rhodium rhodium. So you see now we're actually changing the characteristic radiation so the orange ones are the new ones and you see my characteristic x-rays are 20.3 and 22.7 and our filter is still a rhodium filter so that's going to be 23.22 kevs in essence what we did here is now we increase our energy of the the energy of the beam but in this case instead of increasing it by changing our filter we increased it by changing our target and this target happens to have a higher energy characteristic x-ray and the effective the effective uh, x-ray beam is going to be a higher energy x-ray beam therefore allowing us to have more penetration and this 
would be a combination that we use for bigger patients. So again, I know we have covered a lot. I'm going to go back and try to show you kind of the transition of Molly Molly. We move to Molly Rhodium, and now we move to Rhodium Rhodium, and we have effectively created three different combinations for X-ray beam penetration. Feel free to drop some questions and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Oh, and please don't forget to subscribe. That's really important. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.